Hello and welcome to another video by ClimbingArborist.com. So in this video I'm going to uh, go through all the gear I use. So this is what I personally recommend as equipment to everybody that asks me because you know I've been using this gear for long enough that I, I know what ropes that I like, I know what hardware I like, I know what carabiners I like, um, you know spurs, uh, rope bags, throw cubes, throw line and so on. So everything that I, I talk about in this video today is something that I would buy. Um, I'll tell you why I like it and hopefully this uh, will help you out if you're looking to buy new gear. Um, I will say that I haven't tried everything. There's still a lot of gear that I haven't tried so I can't talk about stuff that I haven't tried or I've maybe tried once or twice. I'm talking about equipment that I've used and that I bought and that I like and that I've bought again if it's worn out. So this is the stuff that I can really um, stick behind, um, put confidence behind and say that I, I really like this. This is a com completely impartial um, video. Um, I've, I've pretty much I've pretty much bought everything that's here. Um, the only things, the only things that I've been given, I'll tell you now. Um, I've been given the the Husqvarna rope bags, um, and I'll tell you if if anything else I've been given. But the majority of this stuff I've bought personally with my own money. I've I've not been given it to say it's great. It's completely impartial. Um, and I stand behind my opinions and my word and I, I like to be honest. I don't like to tell people something that's good if it's not good. So first we're going to talk about ropes. Um, if, you, if you know the different colours of jackets, you might already see a bit of a theme here. So my favourite rope to climb on, um, great all round rope, great for SRT, great for uh, doubled rope or moving rope systems is this Yale 11.7 24 strand rope. So I have actually got um, the Yale Sumac, the Yale Focus and the Yale Hedera. So they're all the exact same rope, uh, just different colored jackets. And I've got a Yale Blue Moon uh, lanyard as well. So it's all the Blue Moon family. Um, that's Yale's, uh, I, d I would say, like generic jacket colour. And then all the other jacket colours are like exclusives for different companies uh, that sell them in different countries, that kind of thing. So, but it's all the same rope. So, Sumac, Focus, and Hedera. And the reason why I like them so much is because they're great for working both. Uh, moving rope system and stationary rope system they're they're not like really really static but they're not they're, there's not too much stretch in them and it's like it, it is for me personally that perfect balance um, of rope that you can use with SRT and then and it's not it's not too static it's not too stiff uh, that it kind of you know, you can feel every lump and bump in your back. Uh, and it's also not too stiff to, to use in a, a doubled rope system as well. So, so if you're only ever to buy one climbing rope, if you're on a bit of a budget and, you know, you, you can't go buying access lines, uh, moving rope system lines, SRT lines, then I would say this is the line to buy. The, yeah, the line to buy. So the 11.7 mil series from Yale Cordage. Uh, okay, next. So for static lines, I use um, it's New England or Teffelberger escalator rope. I'm not even sure if this is still on the market. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it if it was a, that great of a seller, but for an access line only which is what i use it for it is absolutely phenomenal it is uh it's it's lightweight really light it is extremely static hardly any stretch whatsoever um, which if you're using it for a dedicated access line is exactly what you want there's there's hardly 
any stretch in this line. Um, it is, it is, it's got some quite funny characteristics once it's been loaded and then you go try feed it back into your rope bag. It, it's kind of like wire. It, like you feed it in your rope bag and it's like zigzags to get it back in. Um, that's how static it is. So it's, it's a little funny, but for an access line, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and then finally, we've got, this is a fairly new line. It's the Teffelberger Drenner line. Um, so slightly more stretch than the Yale 11.7 mil. Uh, this is 32 strand and it's that that 32 strand gives it a really really smooth jacket uh, it's parallel core curd mantle rope and I use this mainly for a moving rope system and I use it with the zigzag this this combination of mechanical friction hitch and climbing line is absolutely bang on um, I don't think there's a better combination for moving rope system out there uh, it's so smooth on the hand it's 11.8 mil i believe uh, perfect size for the the zigzag so so that's another line that i use and i think it's fantastic you can you can use this for um you know uh, stationary rope systems as well there's just a there's a little more stretching to it but you know if you like i actually like some form of stretch in my rope like i was saying before with the yale um i kind of you know i think a lot of people get really hung up on oh it's you know it's a bit too stretchy um and it depends on the size of the tree you, that you're doing really if you if you're climbing a huge tree where you've got like an 80 foot ascent and then you're base anchoring it then you've got 160 foot of rope in in the system obviously you don't want a stretchy rope um, but if you're if you're doing a 60 foot tree and you've got it canopy tied then you know I think I think the bounce is quite nice um, because I, I when I first got this escalator rope I tried climbing on it single rope with my rope wrench and I absolutely hated it because it's so static you can kind of feel every single jerk and bump and stop and start and like you just feel it all in your back so uh, I, I moved away from wanting a really really static rope to wanting something with a little bit of giving it so that's it for ropes okay so we'll move on to lanyards so what I use for a lanyard is I either use the Yale Blue Moon um, with the Pinto Pulley uh, DMM Carabiner I have the little DMM prusik with the thimble on that's so I can choke it around a branch and make the lanyard like a single line so that I can use the full extent of the length of my lanyard uh, I have a DMM Zodiac carabiner on the end and I also have this little this little piece of cordage that's just kind of like girth hitched around so it's easy to slide up and down but it actually stays in position and that is to hook on the side of my harness um, because it's a 15 foot lanyard I don't want it trailing kind of really really low uh, as I'm climbing around or as I'm walking around on the ground so having everything hooked up to me and having the, the kind of the tail hooked up with this prusik lets it all be about the length of my leg and no longer so uh, that's what I use for one of my lanyards and then the, sec the second lanyard that I use is this uh, Yale blaze which is a, an 11 mil rope and I use the trango cinch on here um, so the trango cinch is good up to 11 mil um, is it I think it might be it's 9.4 to 11 mil so that's why I don't use it with the blue moon because the blue moon's a little bit too fat um, so yeah Yale blaze and Yale blue moon for my lanyard okay friction savers so my primary friction saver is this ring to ring it's actually made from a, a CE lanyard that I nicked with my handsaw and I wanted to make a, a friction saver, an adjustable friction saver where the, 
small ring is the one that's on the prusik and the big ring is one that's fixed on the end because you don't want to be pulling the prusik through the fork so if it's on the small end then it's always going to be on the side of the fork that doesn't get pulled through the fork because um, obviously that bulkiness if it's a tight fork can, can cause some problems so I had this spliced up um, and this is the one that I use most of the time for a friction saver I use it for SRT canopy anchors I use it for doubled rope use it for choking around a stem if I'm blocking down and um, and I've been climbing double rope so that this is the one that I use kind of 90% of the time when I remember to use it I use the pulley saver for doubled rope tying points um, and when I when I do rem like I have this in the top of my rope bag and it's so it's just the one that I grab all the time but when I do remember to use a pulley saver I remember how amazing it is to use on a double rope system because this Pinto rig is so efficient um, like it just seems like there's zero friction obviously there's there's a little bit lost you know it's not it's not a hundred percent perfect but it's about as good as you're gonna get from a from a pulley especially one of this size so when I remember to use this I remember how good of a tool it is so for a moving rope system the pulley saver and for pretty much an all-round uh, friction saver I use this adjustable ring to ring okay now onto the harness that I wear so this is actually a pretty new harness this is the Teufelberger tree motion Evo harness um, now I said in at the start of the video that everything I use is well tried and tested and actually this harness has only just come out and I've probably had it um, what is it I've probably had it four months now but the reason I can really stand behind how good this harness is is because they only changed a few features from the original tree motion to the tree motion Evo so I can I can base my um, I can base my decision off how good the tree motion is and was the older one and the only difference really on this harness is the double bridge which obviously you've got um, two times the strength or being kind of shared so you've got the two bridges the, the strength of two bridges you've got slightly different lower D's to accommodate the, the two bridges which can also be changed out for a webbing bridge um, and I'm sure they're gonna come out with some more designs for, for this part of the bridge um, so that's one change on the harness the other change on the harness are the buckles. Uh, there are different buckles. They, I don't know if it's because the harness is new, but they seem a little easier to adjust the webbing in the buckles, which uh, I remember was pretty frustrating on my my older Evo. If if it was getting cold or rainy and I was wearing a jacket and I needed to adjust the buckles, or if I'd just you know it was after Christmas I put on a couple of pounds um, I found it was really awkward to adjust the buckle uh, but I, I haven't had that issue with this one but I don't know if that's because it's newer or not but you know everything else is pretty much the same um, I in my opinion this is hands down the best harness on the market uh, it's just the the range of motion you have is absolutely uh, phenomenal the the lower D's is such a good design feature I hardly ever use the side D's I pretty much use the side D's to carry my lanyard uh, while I'm not using it and then as soon as I start you know tying on with my lanyard I'm I'm just on my lower D's for the whole time um, I block down trunks on my lower D's, I tie in 
for my second time point when using a chainsaw, using my lower Ds, because you don't ever really want to be suspended by the side Ds, uh, whereas the lower Ds is is being shared by the legs and by the the hip risers and, and it just distributes the, the pressure evenly whereas the side D's are just pulling on your back uh, so low D's absolutely fantastic uh, design feature and then it's, it's so good how you can customize everything you can customize your loops how big you want them where you want them um, there's space for all the carry tools and the, these DMM vaults um, just just lots of space for hanging tools and hanging slings and carabiners from so tree motion harness in my opinion best harness on the market okay so these are the spurs that I use distal gecko spurs aluminium um, I'm not a, I'm not a one for spurring that many trees I'd like if I can if I can do a removal but without spurring trees, I much prefer it. I like to be able to climb around, um, feel my feet. Not, I just, um, I don't know. Call me weird, but I, I prefer not to use spurs. So I'm not too picky about spurs, but these ones just work great for me. They're light. Um, I love the Velcro straps on the top around the shins. Um, I, I haven't tried all the new spurs that are out at the moment I would actually I, I, re, I do really like the look of the Edelrid spurs that have come out uh, apart from that you know I don't um, these are great for me for what I use them for so distal geckos this is what I use so for helmets I use the the Fana Protos I think this is a great helmet it's uh, when the research and development team were designing this they 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 must have just ripped up the you know the generic helmet design and just completely started from scratch because up until now a helmet was the helmet gets designed and then you know the earmuffs are add-on the visors add-on they have add-on eye protection that kind of thing whereas this is all integrated the earmuffs are integrated and they took up inside the helmet um, like that so they're out the way if you're not using them the visor is you know it's it's perfectly designed smooth against the brim um, really nice really nice visor I have the integrated glasses although they're a little dirty integrated glasses in the helmet which is such a good idea because what I always found is that if you're wearing safety glasses underneath your earmuffs then it's not sealing your earmuff properly so I always used to be wearing them where the the arm of the safety glasses was higher and then they'd be like angled down so this is is a great design feature uh, and you, you know you got a lot of side protection you got a lot of rear protection uh, I've mounted my center on the side here because that seemed to be the best option for where there's the center one wanted, wanted to sit uh, yeah so fan of protos that is the helmet i use this is the one that i feel is the best helmet on the market although it's pretty pricey okay throw cube by far my favorite throw cube is the Fultima throw cube um, it's just i don't know what these guys do to make them and i don't know why other companies that, that make throw cubes don't do the same but this thing I've had for uh, quite a number of years now, maybe four or five years, and there is no sign of the the plastic. I don't know what you call them. The supports poking through the ends. It's and I use this one the most because it's slightly bigger and it's just my favourite. So it gets used the most. It gets opened and closed the most, um, and it's it looks like it'll go for another ten years. So. Fultima cube by far it's it's probably three times more expensive than all the other throw cubes on the market but it'll probably last ten times longer so if you've got the money to spend then I would say as they say if you buy cheap you buy twice so buy the Fultima cube first time and you won't look back I do have some other throw cubes that I've won at competitions that kind of thing um, 
these are stein cubes now this is not a knock just on stein but this is these are the ones i've got i've used other throw cubes in the past um, but every other throw cube i've used and that i've gone through and thrown away this happens the the plastic supports just end up poking out the side out the webbing and after a while it just they start to collapse and unless you keep sewing them up again uh, they're going to be useless so like i say not a knock or not a dig specifically at stein it's just these are the other cubes i've got and this is what happens but it happens to pretty much every other throw cube apart from the Fultima. Work boots, uh, as you can see, these are pretty worn now. Uh, I've actually got a new pair, I should have brought them out for this video, but I didn't. Um, these are Mendel or Mindel Airstreams. They're chainsaw protective and they've got protective toe cap as well. These great boots, they're comfortable. Uh, obviously, chainsaw protection. They seem to wear really well, they're waterproof when you first get them. I don't think these are waterproof anymore, um, but for probably the first year they were waterproof. And I'm sure if you look after them and you know reapply some some dubbing or some treatment on them, you can keep them more waterproof. But um, I've had, this is my third or fourth pair of these now I've had, and they, last, they seem to last probably a maybe a couple of years maybe 18 months um, fantastic boots comfortable you're wearing them five days a week so you want the best boot you can to be comfortable so if you, it means paying an extra fifty hundred dollars then it's worth the money so Mendel Airstream okay silkies so I have uh, well hang on I should say hand saws all my hand saws are the brand silky which is a Japanese brand um, this one is the most aggressive one that I have got. This is the Sugoi. Uh, I use this one if I'm doing removals and I'm going to be using a handsaw quite a lot of the time. Then I take this one because it's the most aggressive, cuts through quickest. Uh, I have the Silky Zubat, which is uh, maybe even their best selling handsaw. It's kind of a. It's the one if you're only going to buy one, it's. The, the all-around handsaw I'd say so that's the curved blade silky Zubat um, and then I have the silky uh, what what's that one Suryugi Suryugi I'm not I'm probably saying that completely wrong but that's um, a lighter smaller and thinner blade than the Zubat same length but I believe it's slightly thinner, maybe a touch. Uh, and it's got finer teeth, so it gives a nicer cut. Uh, it's got this aluminium uh, scabbard, which is pretty nice. Also, what I use is these these tool lanyards, little silky lanyards, which are actually um, from a rock climbing tool. They're rated for five kilograms which is great you, your silky doesn't weigh more than that um, and it's so frustrating when you drop your hand saw so I started using these for climbing competitions and then just never took them off and if ever I use a hand saw now that I don't have one of these little lanyards on and I drop my hand saw I, I just kind of go mad I'm just like why did I not put the lanyard on again so and I, I don't really find that they get caught or hung up or anything so um, that's my hand source so for my climbing system if I'm climbing SRT at the moment uh, my go-to is the rope wrench and the hitch the hitch cord that I use I either use this Epicord which is Teffelberger Epicord and the triple attachment pulley by DMM this is the rapid version so it's uh, it has more efficient bearings in it uh, and then I use the DMM ultra O carabiner so that's my SRT system and if I'm climbing double line and I'm using a hitch I'll use the same cord same pulley if I use the Drenner line I'll use the zigzag the mechanical hitch so those are my climbing systems um, 
I'm I'm currently kind of experimenting with some mechanical SRT devices, but at the moment, this is my favourite. This is what I've been using for the last few years, and for somebody going to try SRT for the first time, you're used to a hitch, so you know the feeling. So this is not hard to to get used to. Um, some of the SRT devices, it might feel completely alien. So this is the best kind of transition to go to. Okay, now we move on to rope bags. This is by far my favorite rope bag. Um, do you wanna have a guess how old this bag is? It looks pretty, pretty beat up. Um, finally, the, the zips gave in on the top. Uh, but this is a Buckingham rope bag. It's it's absolutely fantastic. It's got loads of loops to attach all your equipment to. It's got pockets here that I put my hand saws in. Um, it's got a lid on it. It's got backpack straps on it, which is one of the best features because just for hauling all your gear around. So I have a 200 foot rope in here. Then I put my lanyards in here. I put um, my throw cubes in here. I put my harness in here. It's, it's like Mary Poppins handbag. So, this, and it's not very expensive. I, I remember it wasn't when I bought it anyway. Uh, so this is, if I was to have one rope bag and one rope bag only, this would be the one because I can fit so much gear in it. Uh, it stands up and stands open. It's nice and rigid. So for feeding your ropes in, it's really easy. It doesn't collapse on you. Um, so this is my number one rope bag. Oh, there's a skunk. Oh shit, I might get sprayed. Okay, a little skunk scaring. He was wandering around for a bit. I really did not want to get sprayed because then all my stuff would reek for days uh, anyway back to rope bags so you'll see a bit of a theme here um, I love rigid kind of rope bags that stay open so it's easy to feed the ropes in so when you're talking basic rope bags um, I love this one it's the spring loaded rope bag on the side um, this is we weaver this fits you it'll fit like a, an 11 point seven 200 foot rope in here no problem so i use this one love it this is also a fantastic rope bag for cat rescue because it stays open you can stick the cat in it voila like i said at the beginning of the video um, i haven't had these rope bags for long i was given to them i was given them by husqvarna but i think the actual uh, the build quality of these rope bags looks really good the handles look really good, um, it's got big thick webbing, it feels really tough and hard wearing, uh, it stays rigid so easy to feed the rope in again. Uh, the only thing I will say about this rope bag is because the material is pretty thick and really hard wearing, the actual drawstring is, is hard to, to cinch right up tight, uh, that's not a bad thing for a you know for storing ropes in but it's not great for cat rescue which I did use it for once and um, I really struggled to get it tight enough so that the cat couldn't stick its head out uh, but that's not a common occurrence for a rope bag not a problem fantastic so far anyway another rope bag that I have I actually won this at a climbing competition uh, these are quite expensive rope bags Teffelberger um, I think it's a great design that they have lots of holes in, you know, for airing your stuff so it doesn't get all musty, smelly, mouldy, that kind of thing. Um, it comes with this cordage so you can make your own gear loops. So this is just all one continuous piece of cordage threaded through the holes. Um, so I've got all these loops to fasten little connectors on. Uh, the handles are made from rope as well, really, really hard wearing. I don't ever see this rope bag wearing out. So great again, because it's rigid, easy to feed the rope into. And the 
final rope bag that I like or maybe not rope bag just gear bag in general is this DMM one uh, it's quite large I don't use this for ropes I use this to store uh, use this just to store all my accessories all my a lot of hardware a lot of spare cordage um, friction savers foot ascenders all that kind of stuff all goes in here the bag does have back straps although you know you, you don't want to be wearing this bag for long on your back because the straps aren't really that well made for carrying a lot of weight for a long time on your back they're not very they're not padded or anything they're pretty thin so they do cut in a little bit um, uh, it's a 45 litre bag I presume because it says transit 45 on the side so another great rope bag and because of the material this stays fairly rigid also so easy to feed the rope in if that's what you're using it for now I'll move on to webbing slings so I have a bunch of webbing slings that I use for climbing use them for redirects that kind of thing uh, they're just your general webbing sling uh, CMI or weaver I think these ones are different lengths and then I also have this sterling webbing sling that's I, I think it's known as a chain reactor so it's just a bunch of small slings stitched together so it's great for it's great for a bunch of things using different you've got the choice of different lengths so if you need to choke off around a branch that's that big in, you can do so and it's tight up against the branch if you if you rather do a basket hitch because it doesn't reduce the the, the strength of the slings then you can keep still keep the basket hitch tight so I use the chain reactor as well so if I'm climbing SRT or stationary rope technique and I'm using a base anchor my base anchor of choice is this snake anchor it's the 16 foot snake anchor uh, it's it's two pieces well no it's one piece of cordage but doubled over and it's stitched every couple of inches so you've got all these points where you can attach to so you can get it nice and cl um, nice and tight up against the trunk uh, and you have the ring on the end so you just feed the end through and tighten it up and then choose your closest hole uh, and then I use to make it a lowerable base anchor I use the Petzl rig uh, very simple easy lowerable base anchor setup and I just love the snake anchor uh, great design okay for throw line uh, the line that I prefer is the Teffelberger Dynaglide or it was known as New England Dynaglide but Teffelberger have bought New England so Teffelberger Dynaglide uh, 1.8 mil I think or 1.75 mil and I usually throw with a 10 ounce weight uh, this is a Weaver one I have a Petzl throw bag uh, I haven't I'm not great at throwing so I haven't found th certain throw bags are better to throw with than others really uh, I like the throw bags like this weaver one that has the the attachment point at the bottom so you can clip on your rope with a carabiner uh, I think that's a great function so I never buy a throw bag without a connection point on the bottom apart from that pretty simple I can't really say too much about throw line or throw ball carabiners of choice uh, I have a lot of DMM carabiners, a lot of oval, ultra O carabiners, uh, I have D DMM Zodiac carabiners. I also really like the Rock Exotica carabiner. Um, at first, if you're not used to using it, the, act the action is the opposite way to the DMM, so it feels like upside down. Uh, so it's a little bit of a just getting used to it, but the the action and the function um, is great on the rock exotica carabiner so I really like using these um, I think all DMM hardware is fantastic it, I just like the 
the feel of it, how textile friendly it is. Everything seems to be really nicely rounded. Um, all of their their hardware that they make, really nice. So DMM, Rock Exotica, great carabiners. Recently got the the new DMM revolver rig, which is a great design. It has an integrated pulley in the system, a rated becket on the bottom. Um, obviously the triple attachment, uh, sorry, the triple action gate on it. Uh, really high efficiency pulley, so that's going to come in handy with a lot of uh, new techniques and things like that. So revolver rig. I use the DMM Pinto pulleys quite often for uh, uh, various different applications, use it on my lanyards quite often. Um, it has the benefit of having this rated becket on the bottom so it's an attachment point that you can clip into. Uh, just a fantastic uh, kind of small pulley, so the DMM Pinto. And my final items I've got is the Petzl Pantin uh, foot ascender, that's what I use. I, I did prefer the older style Pantin, but um, I got the new style and I really like that they sell this little, the little catch that you can put in there because I always like my Pantin to be locked out so that it doesn't keep popping out of the rope all the time. Um, the webbing on the newer one is thinner, uh, I, I don't think I like that as much but it still works great so Petzl Pantin foot ascender. Uh, this is what I use for my neck tether to be climbing SRT, I have the little DMM uh, XRSE carabiner on the end. Sorry, XSRE carabiner on the end. Uh, I love these little carabiners. I use them. I've got a bunch of them. I use them for all kinds of stuff. Although they are actually quite expensive, uh, but they're pretty cool little things. So uh, yeah, I just use this elastic neck tether. Um, it's got a bit of the armor plus jacket around the side, which pretty stinky. Maybe I need to change that. Uh, and that is it. That is pretty much all the gear that I would recommend to anybody uh, there's a bunch more gear I've got that I use now and again different cordage different carabiners different hardware but this is what I use a lot of the time this is what I recommend to anybody that asks me um, like I said there's a lot of gear out there that I haven't tried so you might use something that you like that you haven't seen me talk about that doesn't mean to say I don't like it that maybe means I haven't tried it or I my style I prefer something different um, I'm not making an argument for what's the best and what's the worst gear these are just my personal opinions and I hope it helps you guys out there thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and comment on the video below um, subscribe hit the bell and it'll give you a notification when we release new videos uh, if you have any questions then put them in the comments but thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video thank you bye for now